Hey! Hello. Welcome back to Fantasy Lab, a show where we talk all about homebrew. Pete, what are we talking about right now? We are going to be talking about some spells. Uh, we're, we're going over our homework for this past week. Uh, and this was Ugh, a homework. Was homework. Yeah. Uh, I want to rename it because <laughs> it's called homework. I right like now. calling it homework. Uh, it's called homework right now. And I was thinking, I was like, I want to do homework. Um, well, you know, we can do. We can call it the research expedition. That's way better. See, yeah, everyone wants to way go on more research. adventurous. Everyone wants to go on a fucking research expedition. Yeah. Um, but um, this week's homework was to create a spell that has a permanent effect. Uh, I've often thought that there's so many things in the world of Dungeons and Dragons that are magical in nature and that are kind of permanently magical. Uh, things like, uh, and this was one of the ones, uh, I have a couple examples that I made uh, to show off before we get into it. Uh, Jeremy, you made one as well, didn't you? I only made one, yes. Some people went crazy. Uh, what's the, uh, I'm, well, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very glad that people went crazy with it. Uh, but um, well, there's yeah, so many flip- things, I was just going to say, after you, Jeremy. Oh, so flip note saying mine aren't the best, but I tried it. Well, that's what it's all about, flip note, right? It's about taking this this prompt and just thinking about it right and saying how would i do this if i had if i needed if i wanted to do this in a game if i had an idea in my game that i wanted to to do this for and once you start asking those questions and kind of stretching those intellectual muscles that's how you figure it out all homebrew is is understanding the process of problem solving your problem is I want a permanent spell, a spell that makes a cool permanent effect because one of my players is really interested in that kind of stuff. That's the problem here. And figuring out how to solve that, like that might help you figure something else out totally unrelated in the future. Like maybe you, uh, uh, you have a player who wants to set up a very elaborate trap in one of your games. And what you did here, creating the spell, gives you an idea of how you could adjudicate that and do that in your own adventures. So think about that kind of stuff. I don't know. It's just, I think it's not about what the end product necessarily is, even though that can be very cool. It's about the process, right, Pete? It certainly is. Uh, trying to get you thinking in different ways and just in so many places, like just the act of making something, you learn so much about it just from trying to do it. Uh, and, you know, even if it doesn't come out exactly the way you imagined, uh, you gain a lot in the, uh, in the act. So, um, yeah, let's let's start looking at some of these. Uh, I guess we'll do. Uh, I guess we'll do mine first. Uh, y'all can y'all can judge me. And uh, I had um, I had a lot of ideas that I wanted to make. I, I yeah, stuck so it to two. For the record, here, guys, a whole ton of you did these, which is amazing. Yeah, uh, I'm super excited it. of all of the. Um, I don't know outpour of excitement, whatever. Um, that folks had. So Pete, I'm, I've jumped onto yours. We're on the the Pete the Pete homebrew things. What, what do we want to start with? Uh, so my uh, my first two here uh, and my permanent spells. I have one very simple level one spell here called Imprint, uh, and the idea was I wanted to make a spell that let people make photos and take pictures of stuff in the world. Uh, and the way that my spell works uh, is you can, you know, you can create wanted posters for yourself, very accurate ones. Uh, if, you know, you're looking for a lost cat, you can, like, make a very good where's the lost cat thing uh, as a hero. And, and, you know, there's countless ways. Anything that you could do with a photograph in the real world, you could do with the spell. Uh, and this is in print. Uh, it's a first level transmutation spell. Uh, it has a casting time of one minute, a range of touch. Uh, it has a component which is consumed. Uh, it is uh, fine inks and parchment worth at least 10 gold pieces, and it lasts until dispelled. Uh, and here is the actual effect. You touch a piece of parchment no larger than five feet in any dimension and imprint an image on it. The imprinted image can be as simple or as detailed as you like, though you are unable to perfectly imprint the likeness of something unless you are looking at it during the casting of the spell. Um, very, very simple. Artificer, Bard, and Wizard uh, are the classes that would be able to use it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's imprint, um, and uh, I can think of a lot of uh, I can think of a lot of times that this would be fun. Um, what um, I like this a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm glad uh, the um, kind of the first time I I had this spell came to me once because I needed a NPC to do it. 
Uh, I needed an NPC to be able to like basically take a picture of the players. So I just had him like put a pen to a piece of paper and the ink just flowed out and made a picture of them. Uh, and I was like, oh, well, why can't a player do that? Because uh, that's really the bottom line of this whole assignment is why aren't there more spells that let players make like permanent magic effects, make little magical items, magical trinkets, you know, things along those lines traps yeah. whatever ideas that you guys all came up with i'm sure there's tons of stuff here uh but um and, yeah that's and there are point. certain things that aren't in there for a reason like oh man where's a spell that lets me become a mummy ward well yes probably a reason that that's not there um uh that's not meant to be easy yeah but if you're playing in a game where your players are weird and they want to become mummy lords and you're cool with that like the super evil game maybe that's the reason you want to create that spell that's another another value there. What else uh, have we got, Pete? I, I really liked Imprint. Um, this other one uh, is, I think, a little bit more on the nose. This is just a spell that permanently makes an illusion. Uh, because, again, my mindset was the same. I wanted... I all the time will see in like dungeons in 5e, for example, there's just an illusory wall that you can just walk through, but you don't know about it. And why can't a player have an illusory raw wall in their own little keep that they have for themselves or to set up their party's hideout or whatever. So uh, this just lets you create a permanent illusion. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, if we want to actually do the mechanics of it. Um, the, um, the language from it was, was, brought from a whole bunch of different places. Uh, some of them were taken from Silent Image. Some of them were taken from Programmed Illusion. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of just different illusions that are kind of smacked together I mean, to make can this it move? one permanent one. Right, can it move? Can it make sounds? Or is this like your classic crackling fire in the fire in a fireplace? It's your crackling fire. Uh, actually, that is literally the example that I gave. Uh, uh, you can create an image of a flickering file, fire or of a patrolling guard, uh, and the length of the repetitive motion is up to a minute. So it's a silent image. You can have it be a very simple thing that moves, like you could have like a sleeping dragon that sits in front of your keep and just kind of heaves with breath, and it doesn't make any sound, but you can have that how image is it, there. How is it different than Programmed Illusion, though? Uh, programmed Illusion does... Because that's the problem. I, I thought of that kind of thing, too, and I was like, man... Program is a six level spell. How do I how do I make like a similar thing that's you know what I mean? Program delusion has a lot of intricacies in mm -hmm. the manner in which you're able to program it, and you can get very detailed in what you can program it to do. Um the kind of distinction of this is that program and illusion after it goes through its programming, it disappears. This is meant to just be a static thing that you place and stays there. Interesting. Okay. Um, because again, is there a reason you put a fourteen on the save? Yes, uh, because this was actually a thing that I liked that I have never seen a spell do before. Uh, I thought it was weird to use your spell casting image, uh, spell casting DC for something that is going to exist forever. Uh, because then, like, if your spell casting DC goes up, is it the one then when you first cast it, or the one when you oh. didn't? Uh, and then I made the casting, the higher level casting ability, uh, be a raise the DC effect. Oh, okay, that's a cool design. Yeah, uh, I liked that little bit of design. I think that's actually probably the most inspired thing on this, uh, is that increase the DC by raising the spellcasting ability. And I think uh, that also really does something to, to affect the balance of it, right? Programmed illusion, by the time you're casting it, you're like got an 18, a 17 or 18 or something on your DC. It's pretty high. So I could see that being a cool balance of, well, yeah, this is only fourth level. Uh, but the DC is also going to be lower, right? You have access to it earlier, but it's not going to be as convincing. Uh, um, I think that's very cool. Yeah, Angst has, uh, and after both say, it's just a real life GIF. Yeah, really, that's pretty much what it is, uh, is just a, you make a GIF. Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy, I remember you mentioning something about having the greatest spell that's ever been made. Uh, everybody... <laughs> Should we do mine now? Or I don't want to make everyone feel bad. Who's after me? All right, uh, Frosty, we'll do yours after mine, uh, just so that, you know, I don't know. I don't want anyone else having to follow up my act, you know? <laughs> all right, Jeremy, show us, show, us, show us what you got. The greatest spell of all time is... Oh, my God. I just read the title of it. Second level transmutation, verbal somatic material components, a vial of ooze, and then I'll talk more about which a spell consumes later. I was part of a bigger project that came to my brain. Last until the spell, range 30 feet, one action. 
Choose an object or a solid surface that you can see that fits in a 10-foot cube within range and jellify it. A jellified object uh, or surface becomes elastic and gains distance to bludgeoning damage and immunity to fall damage, but retains its appearance, mass, and other characteristics. The surface or object remains jellified until it is destroyed or the spell is dispelled or suppressed. A creature standing on jellified surface or object can use action to bounce, tripling its jump distance until the end of its next turn or until it leaves the jellified area. <laughs> Additionally, a creature which falls onto or is pushed into a jellified surface bounces harmlessly to a stop. You and made you the slime spell, block from Minecraft. I did. And then <laughs> when you cast it at higher levels, you can jellify a larger, larger surface. <laughs> this is the greatest spell of all time. Uh, you made you made the slime block from Minecraft. <laughs> um, uh, Jeremy you could jellify a sword. It doesn't actually do anything if you do that. I guess you could pogo stick your jellified sword. That'd be hilarious. That would be <laughs> that would be wild. Uh, but uh, Jeremy, as much as like this I is kind of a so goof, much. well, as much as this is kind of a goof on the Minecraft block. Uh, it's also like, it's this is actually exactly kind of the thing I had in mind, which is, yeah. here's a cool thing <laughs> that you might find in a dungeon that you, there's no way for it to exist in the mechanics of 5e other than just making up mechanics for it. And I like when stuff is, when you make something a spell that can create something, it becomes justified how it exists in the world rather than it just being just a thing that you just put there, you know, like. Mm -hmm. There's a process. It, it kind of gives that credibility to, yeah, there's a process to make one of these things, and people can do, anyone could do it if they know how to do it. And I very much like that, and I, I think this I, is a great example. I also have, like, a concept here for, like, a future thing. I said which a spell consumes originally, and the idea would be this, this spell could be part of, like, a magic item, like a spell book, that uh, could be filled with unique spells that have to deal with monstrous components. So, like, this, you need a vial of ooze so you can, like, harvest that from, like, a gelatinous cube or something. Or, like, a spell uh, that has, like, the unicorn, like, a unicorn's tear. Uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I know exactly. And then that. any 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 spellcaster attuned to the book could cast the spells through it, assuming they have the components. That'd just be a really fun little expansion, I think. Yeah, that'd be a fun project. I just thought, ah, uh, just, I got so excited. I love Jellify so much. Uh, you can use such a, a dumb spell, but I really enjoy it. Expend a beholder eye to, I like. I imagine exactly. some of them could even be like, expend a beholder eye to do a beholder eye ray, like. Yeah, maybe. Um, That's a, a very cool, a very cool. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff you could do with that. Anyway, I like that idea, uh, but uh, yeah, this Jellify, nice uh, nice spell, Jeremy. <laughs> boing boing. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, actually, you know, we're going to go through money's next. It's next on the list. Frosty will get to yours eventually. Uh, telepathic uh, link. This is uh, by Vbunny23. Vbunny, let's see what you got. Uh, six level spell, big one. Um, 30 foot, one action cast. You forge a telepathic link with one willing creature of your choice, cycling you together permanently. Oh. Uh, once the is created. Each telepathic is bond. They have a common language. It is possible over any distance, although the mechanics extends to other planes, only which spell can sever the bond once it is created. Golden egg worth 1,000 gold, which the spell consumes. I wonder why the golden egg? Is, is, that, um, is that something sure. that uh, is... Is that, like, associated with telepathy in some way? Um... um. Not that I know of, Vibani, let us know. If, yeah, let us uh, know the uh, the reason for the golden egg. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's Telepathic Link. Uh, I mean, I kind of like the idea of forging a permanent telepathic link between two people. I think that could be cool. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think it's like a very the, cool spell, actually. I like this a lot. Uh, I like the idea of this being used almost in, like, a neck... Like, someone being tricked into doing this with an NPC mm -hmm. who now has, like, a... Tele I don't know. There's a lot of, like, creative... Um, uh, there's a lot of creative things, I think, that you could do with this as a dungeon master and as a player. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like it. Oh! Rary's telepathic bond takes two pieces of eggshell from different types of creature. I see. So it was... The golden egg was inspired by that. I like that a lot. That's uh -huh. very neat, everybody. Yeah. One thing I might say, the wish spell is kind of, that's a little funky. What might be a cool, uh, another idea, 
um, because I think your 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 goal in doing that, right, is that like an anti magic field or a dispel magic doesn't get rid of this, uh, and I think that's very good design. Like that's smart. Um, maybe something like a ninth level dispel magic instead of saying a wish spell, uh, and then maybe a dispel magic of sixth level or lower suppresses this effect. Might be a, another way to take that. Um, um, that's a. Um, I, I think that's a cool direction to go with it. Um, yeah, I, I like I'd the also, idea of being able to suppress it. Yeah, I'd also recommend, uh, and maybe maybe there's a reason you chose int score three, but Rary's bond is in score two, so I assume I don't know, figure consistency where you can have it. Um, um, yeah, three, I think, is the cool. number on like awaken. There's, mm -hmm. uh, it makes more sense to go with the Rary's bond one though, Natch, uh, because that's what you're picking it from. Um, anyway, I like it. It's very simple. Um, pretty. Um, pretty elegant just a very very crisp spell I, I think the level is right i think the value of the thing is right as well yeah very cool uh pete let's let's talk about kringle's little helper a fifth level spell from uh the forgotten one um uh, oh you got little uh level? yeah you got the little um flavor text here too oh he was a jolly old artificer with rosy cheeks and a cherry-like nose. He always wore the wet, uh, that red and white furred robe, too. You may have heard in the past he used elves to help in his endeavors, but that's a lot of ho uh, hogwash. He actually <laughs> used a bunch of dolls he created himself. I tell you that Kristoff Kringle was one heck of a magic toy maker. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, this is a uh, obviously a, a, a Christmassy themed item. Uh, but uh, let's let's look at the um, let's look at the spell. Uh, so obviously, it's a little doll, your little partner. Uh, this is designed to create a uh, a servant. It looks like was the vision that you had for it. Uh, create a little uh, little companion in the form mm -hmm. of a wooden doll. Um, do you do you want to go, Jeremy, or would you like me to uh, take this one? Uh, you, you take this one. I really I just wanted to say the thing I really liked was the two tiny two smooth spears made of emeralds. Just the little eyes. It's a very fun component. Um, that is very cool. Uh, Kringle's Little Helper, 5th level. Uh, it's a ritual. You can ritual cast it. as a casting time of 6 hours, so uh, that's probably what you will do with it. Uh, it's cast as ritual. Actually, I don't even know if you want it to be a ritual. I feel like if you're taking the 6 hours, it doesn't need to be ritual, because that's your whole day anyway. That's what you were doing that day. So maybe you don't need the tag, but uh, mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. Uh, Last until dispelled. Uh, you create a small doll to assist you wherever you go. Uh, the doll is made of materials of your choice. It has 13 AC, half of the spellcaster's maximum hit points, and a walking speed of 25 feet. Uh, it shares all other ability scores, skills, proficiencies, and features of the spellcaster. Uh, the doll can speak and understand the same languages as the spellcaster. It has telepathy with the spellcaster up to 60 feet. It has access to the spellcaster spells up to second uh, level, second spell level. Spellcasters, uh, the doll doesn't need food, water, air, or sleep. It's friendly to you and creatures you designate. Uh, it is sentient, but it only shares the same thoughts and feelings of its creator. Uh, and is capable of assisting the spellcaster in everyday life and in combat. If its hit points are reduced to zero, uh, but the damage doesn't exceed its maximum hit points, the body is destroyed but repairable. Um, the doll can be repaired by the spellcaster by expending a fifth level spell slot uh, to take six hours to magically reconstruct the doll. Uh, and if the, it exceeds that, uh, the spell doll is completely destroyed. Um, Interesting. So, uh, so this is kind of like a lesser simulacrum, is what it looks like. Yes. Uh, um, which, when I was first kind of reading, I was thinking that it was going to be way better than simulacrum, but then it was the, you can only get up to a second level spell. Um, I guess the the concern I have here is in, besides just being a um lower level version of simulacrum in what ways is it meaningfully different right and i i can't really tell uh frankly you know it feels a lot like a semi-permanent spell effect that already exists you know what i mean um yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm kind of with you on that yeah. one uh and I, I think just decrease like limiting the the spell slot level I don't think necessarily alleviates the potential issues here. The um, yeah, the, the one thing that 
concerns me about this. I, I mean, I guess there's a there's a couple of kind of overarching issues, but the one big one for me is uh, this seems kind of reasonable to make to a point where you would just always make one. Um, yeah. Uh, it doesn't have kind of like, well, really any downside. I, I don't know what Simulacrum does. I mean, of course, that's a higher level spell as well. Uh, so and I, I think it also is kind of mm -hmm. true that most people, if they can cast that spell, will eventually cast it and try and make one. Uh, and, you know, again, it's just like when you hit fifth level, you have an extra six second. It, it just gives you an extra turn in initiative and a bunch of extra yeah. spells. Uh, if for some reason or another you were like taking a, it's a fifth level spell, so you have to get to ninth level. So maybe it's a little bit impractical, uh, but it also would have like a bunch of fighter features. So if you're like doing a multi-classing thing, uh, you could just get like really... <laughs> really powerful yeah i mean uh, it took away the limit on the number like simulacrum can only ever have one so far as i can tell you you can have as many as you want it took away the cost of actually repairing them simulacrum costs 100 gold per hit point to fix uh this doesn't you just can do it with six hours it just is i know you wanted it to be like a lower version but it just seems much better in a lot yeah of it's ways. well it's, so it's, I, I think it's smaller it's not like as powerful to have a completed Kringle's Little Helper as it is to have a completed Simulacrum, but it's just way more efficient is the thing about this spell. Yeah. Um, so maybe maybe another another swing at this uh, or a different a different take. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if there's even necessarily room for it since it does, like, oh God, gaining an extra turn as a um, fifth level spell cast the day before is so strong. Um, yeah, yeah. It, I, I just I don't think, know if there's how much room there is for it. I, I think the place to look at for Kringle's Little Helper, uh, because I think the direction that you wanted to go is you wanted to make something that was kind of like a tiny servant almost. Yeah. Um, and what tiny servant is what fourth level, third, third level. level. Um, so I, I would look at tiny servant and not balance down from Simulacrum, but maybe try and balance up from that spell and see if you can find something that's um that has its own kind of niche and is a little bit uh, better for it there. But yeah, those are my rough thoughts on this. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks for participating. Yeah, thank Frog. you so much for sharing Frog. I, it's a very difficult challenge to like scale down a high level spell. Uh, it's yeah. It's much easier to buff a, uh, it's yeah, much easier to buff a lower level one. Very hard to scale stuff down, especially when they're powerful effects like that, like simulacrums. Uh, this is by Grogrin here. It's a spell called Crystal Mind. Uh, Ooh, it's an eighth level. Eighth spell. level. <laughs> um, uh, casting time three hours or a long rest uh, and range of self. An uncut gemstone, roughly the size of the caster's head, approximate 5,000 gold piece worth, uh, a vial of the caster's blood, and jeweler's tools. I like the jeweler's tools. Excellent I like that a lot. addition. I uh, like that very much. More I wonder if this will happen. in some way be an Indiana Jones reference, but... Uh, God, actually, I like the idea now, just like I was thinking of like the monster handbook, a handbook of like, here are cool spells you could have if you have these tool proficiencies. That's very cool. Anyway, um, last until dispelled or destroyed. The spell creates a replica of the caster's mind, doubling the number of spell slots accessible, oh gosh, based on the number of spell slots at level 8 of the caster. Spells chosen are the same as spells were cast during the previous long rest, including the level of the spell by the creator of the Crystal Mind. Spells cast from the Crystal Mind require only verbal and material components. You cannot cast Crystal Mind with Crystal Mind. Uh, you cannot cast <laughs> with Crystal Mind. And if anyone but the caster attempts to use the Crystal Mind, it will instantly shatter. Each caster may only have one Crystal Mind active at a time. Um, um, Interesting. Okay. So is the point here that it gives you more spell slots or just more prepared or known spells? Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure what the direction you were going for uh, with it. Oh, I really we have, like um, the idea of extra well, we known prepared spells. I was going to say, we have here, they're actually exactly their thoughts on it. Um, ah, another geez. mind, just some thoughts. Uh, my idea is based on giving accessible expansion to spell slots that is in the same way still a part of a character as an exact copy of the mind of the caster while still being affected by a player. Uh, and then how would you use it? 
Um, I think when player sees this, they will think, ooh, more spell goes spark spark. However, I easily see the Crystal Mine being used as a pseudo golem core, the start of a warforged, or basically of a phylactery in the case of a warlock, as there is no necromancer wishing to ex uh, ascend the lichdom. Um, the, um... Interesting. So, I really like the vibe of this spell. Um, mm -hmm. Like, the the Crystal Mind, like, you're creating, it definitely feels like a, a light phylactery, in a sense. Uh, where you are just, you're creating this, like, approximation of your own power and, like, suffusing your energy into it, like, pouring your blood into it. Is There's a, there's a lot of flavor in here that I really like. Uh, I think that having spell slots go up like that, I, I just don't know if you can do it on that kind of scale. Um, well, it's it's funky, right? Because, like, in on one hand, right, for your own game, I could see myself using something like this in a game that I love. I certainly However, for a general use, like other DMs using it, which is typically what we're what Pete and I at least are designing for here, this is way too strong. Um, but but like, I, is it actually? It's well, it's like a simulacrum. It's like a simulacrum, but, but it doesn't give an um, extra turn. It doesn't give you an extra turn. Um, the thing is, is it, it refreshes. Simulacrums, do they get spell slots back? No. Um, that's the difference, is I think this is intended to get spell slots. Actually, if this is not designed to, um, give you back your spell slots, because I think it, mm -hmm. this as it stands is while you have this, you just have double spell slots. But if this is just you create this crystal mind that has all of your spells in it for the day, and that like you're spending a whole bunch of gold to essentially get like a scroll a spell scroll of your whole spells inventory um that is actually something that maybe is still a little bit strong but you could kind of balance around um i i think that's closer yeah it's it's very interesting i'm just i'm not sure how much more i can really give for like meaningful feedback it's very cool I think is what I could say. It's a very cool concept. Um, um, yeah, agreed. Uh, I, I think look at maybe cl clarifying the... Uh, my, my next step on this, if I were you, Brogan, would be to look at maybe clarifying um, whether or not the spell slots though. come back. Uh, and I, mean, I don't think it is, actually. I think this is actually balanced, even as an 8th level spell. Assuming Given you a 2nd, 7th, uh, like double the 7th and lower level spells. Um... I don't think it's actually busted because a simulacrum does the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't refresh, but like, I. It also this doesn't give you an extra turn, so. You just don't think that like having that much extra gas is a. I mean, it might be. Um, I mean, that's really what it is. It, it like very much depends on the. Well, yeah. I, the way I see it is though is it's not just giving you an extra. It's basically buffing up all your spells because now you're just casting more of the higher level ones, you know what I mean? Because, like... If yeah, no, I, I, I fully I fully get you. Um, um, I don't know, I feel like this could definitely work almost as is if it didn't recharge the spells and you were essentially just creating this imprint of all your spell slots. Uh, I the think fact that, that we're so unsure about this means you're going in an interesting direction. For sure. Uh, and also, again, I really like the vibe of this. It's a very cool yeah, idea. Yeah, very cool. The picture helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I can see this like as something that like an enemy uses, right? And then the players see that and they're like, "I want to do that. I want to make a crystal right? mind." That's exactly the and that's exactly the kind of thing that I was going for with yeah this whole category. So hit the bill on those. Anyway, so, thank you yeah, so much for sharing the head that for sure. Yeah, thank you very much, Grogren. Uh, we now have there are two from Sword. So we're gonna come back to your second one uh, once we've gone through at least one from everybody because we have. A lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, stuff coming through here um but the first one see i see here is one called channeling and this is particularly interesting to me because it's a cantrip uh i was on the wrong page all right now i'm here Ooh, a permanent cantrip um material component any item capable of drawing or etching a glyph uh you can draw two circles on any object or surface up to 60 feet apart 
one with the glyph for intake and one for expulsion. Once drawn, the intake glyph will constantly suck up nearby objects under 10 pounds, and the, ob and the objects come out the expulsion glyph as long as the objects fit uh, within the drawn circles. If the object is malleable, such as water or air, the size of each glyph can be drawn to increase or decrease the pressure, similar to the nozzle uh, on a water uh, hose. Interesting. And you have a high level casting, which is a little, a little funky for a cantrip, but I think the idea is it would be cantrip progression where the distance would increase. This is a very interesting thing. Hmm. Basically like telephone, right? Instead of words, you can do things. Hmm. Interesting. You create a hole in like a book and it comes out another book. That could be very neat. I see this as something that like, oh, Pete, did you, are you there, my dude? Oh, I muted myself because I was sneezing and then I forgot to unmute myself. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't Thank want you guys to have to hear my, my big sneezes. <laughs> they call him Big Sneeze Pete. Um, I was saying a lot about it. Uh, yeah, well, I th it's kind of almost like a mini portal. Uh, that you're making between yeah. two things that you can only move small objects between. Um, I think there's some phrasing stuff that you would need to do uh, rather than... Uh, well, for starters, Jeremy, do you think that you could do this as a cantrip? I just, like, I don't know... The the in My instinct is that this is, like, an effect that's too powerful can't, for a cantrip, but I also can't think of anything to do with it that isn't just fun and that you wouldn't be doing with something like a mage hand. So I'm kind of like... Uh, I'm very on the fence. Uh, where, where are you at? I really like it, actually. Um, it might be too powerful for a cantrip. This might need to be, like, a first or second level spell, but I um, really, really like it. This would be very comfortable as a first level spell. Yeah. It would be very, very comfortable as a first level spell. I mean, it's like it's just a little portal, right? Like every D&D &D setting ever, right, has the like, ah, yes, this is my magical hot tub because I'm a rich and noble person, ah, right? And it's like, oh, shit, they got a magical fucking heated tub. That's really cool, right? And it's like, oh, how, how does it work? Well, we have a fire elemental trapped in the basement in, in our <laughs> boiler. We, we just portal the water out of it. Yeah, the exactly. Hot, the right. hot it's, air comes through the portal and then expels into the, like... It, it's how any, like, major magical city functions. Exactly like what Zord was saying. How Central City transports trash the trash kingdom. It, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. The arcane pipe, almost. Um, I like that the um, the distance is, is, I think, dead on on it. About 60 feet apart is a very comfortable thing for this. Uh, there is a point where, like, if the distance was long enough, for example, taking the limit of distance off of it, this becomes extremely powerful. There's a ton of crazy stuff that you can do with it then. But well, within and that's 60 something cool, feet, right? Like, if you make this a, a, like, let's say it's a first level spell, and then up at, like, at by ninth level planar distance, you could make... Ah, my little portal from the plane of air, right? Or something. That could be so cool. <laughs> um, there's, uh, anyway, this, I think that this idea has a lot of legs. I really like that it's not for people. It's explicitly, you cannot, it only sucks up objects uh, and mm -hmm. does not play objects around with any, yeah. wait, objects and what? Liquids. Uh, liquids, yes. Um Anyway, yeah, I, I think like that it. this is close. I think it needs some some phrasing work, of course, uh, as most first passes always do. Uh, but I really like the direction you're going with this sword. Yeah, maybe if I were to recommend a couple of minor changes, something like uh, maybe put a size on the objects, like tiny objects as a limiter. Um, mm. And then um, maybe if there could be some clause for like, if the surface is covered, right, the effect fails. I think that could be cool. So, you know, the, at least there's some control over them once they're, once they're there. Like there's an off valve, effectively, uh, and uh, to these semi-permanent effects. And I would definitely consider, um, uh, I would definitely consider like if you're gonna go the cantrip route or the spell route, depending on which one. If you're going the spell route, I would put probably some small material component cost on doing it. 
Uh, and then if you're going the cantrip route, I would, um, I, I would consider I, I limiting the number of them that you can ex you can exist that can exist at once. Oh, time. yeah, that's a fair point. Um, but uh, yeah, Very those are my cool, thoughts. Though. Yeah, I like it. Um, you want to do uh next one from uh, Frosty here? Yeah, I really like those spells that are like here's something that's essential for a magical city, right? A magical civilization because it just I mean, well, it's essential for a magical civilization. High magic uh, worlds would benefit very greatly from that spell. Cool artificer spell, too. That seems like a very artificer thing to do. Alistair's Dungeon Diorama. Uh, easily manage the inner workings of their lair, hideout, or dungeon. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> Ninth level conjuration. Casting time, one hour. Range of touch. A scale diorama of the affected complex worth 5,000 gold. One sapphire worth 200 gold for its control point, which the spell consumes. Interesting. Ooh. And it lasts until the diorama is destroyed. You place a series of sapphires in each location you plan to set a trap or magical spell effect in. Uh, and once completed, you meticulously fiddle with your skill diorama, creating a magical <laughs> conduit between the diorama locations and each sapphire. Each sapphire is consumed, creating this glyph of warding spell, uh, which remains until the spell ends. And each glyph is each glyph is set upon casting the spell and can be reactivated by casting glyph of warding on the diorama. Triggers and injuries glyphs can be changed each time the glyphs are reactivated. Interesting. So, so you went you went really hard in the glyph of warding spell here. Um casting glyph of warding on the diorama diorama at a higher level. Okay, cool. Uh See, what I assumed you were going to do with this is you were going to have um, you be able to cast spells into the diorama and they appear, you know, affect the areas where you have the sapphires. This has so much potential. Uh, this concept of making like a scale model of your house. Uh, I, I feel like there's so many directions you could go. A uh, one that I immediately thought of is was like, you would see illusions of people walking through it. Like if there's yeah. someone in your dungeon, I think would be another really obvious direction to go. Um, the um, the referencing of Glyph of like, obviously this is like a very like, it, it's kind of a goofy spell. And I think the only reason it's goofy is because you chose the word diorama. Um, I like it though. Uh, I, I do too. I mean, it has, it has personality for sure. Uh, I feel like, you would be better served not going in the Glyph of Warding direction just because Glyph yeah. of Warding is such an intrinsically complicated spell on its own. Uh, and this is an just extra complication on top of Glyph of Warding. Don't um, do the spell within a spell. Yeah, uh, don't spellception. Um, I would just come up with your own way of doing that effect. Like, mm -hmm. basically doing a Glyph of Warding effect in the thing if that's what you want it to do. Even if your spell has to be a whole column long. Like... Yeah, I think as a ninth level spell, that's perfectly fair to have. Yep. I think you can even include things like, you know, aspects of the alarm spell, where you know when the creatures pass through uh, the areas you designate with the, the sapphires, or, right, uh, aspects of the arcane eye spell. You can see, you know, you can use your action, right, to see through the, you know, in those areas. I think that could be very, very cool. Um, and I think that's kind of the direction you were going with this. I, I really, really uh, dig it, frankly. Um, I love the um, extra material components b built into it. I actually really mm -hmm. like that idea of, like, you can spend more money to make this a little bit better in different, like, increments, I think is a cool idea. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I dig it. Very, very yeah. cool. Uh, this one's got a ton of, ton of cool I would to keep want going with to it. use this. I'm I a very much to... player character i like making my wizards layers um i want to use it for my bad guys i want all of my i want every lich i run from now on to do that um want to look at one of cherry's concepts next uh yeah, time so, here. yeah cherry didn't put them in the uh in the, the dock but they did create a couple of cool ideas here so here's one a fifth level divination called timeless uh, and this is a one action casting time range of 60 feet. Uh, and the material component is the object you want to place the spell on. 
Uh, causes a non-living object you choose to fit within a five by five cube to be covered in a shell of stasis. The object becomes timeless and will no longer suffer the effects of the passing of time. And the object can only be destroyed by normal means. Uh, the object must no of uh, the object must be within the side of. Five. Okay, so they just have to fit within the five by five. No other object can be within the cube. Okay. Okay. So it's just one thing is stasis. You can only get one at a time. Uh, Incredibly I, cool. I love this. I think that's an amazing spell. Um, I have almost I have almost nothing to say about it. Um, I have been I was actually thinking myself when I was putting it together. I kind of wanted a thing that made a simple magic item, uh, and this is to make the simplest magic item, which is to say an yeah. object that can't be destroyed. Uh, rather than by saying by normal means, I would use the phrase by non magical means. Um, I don't even necessarily say that. I think you can just say you know while the spell affects the object, it cannot be destroyed. Uh, could it be damaged or destroyed? Like, I think you could just do that. Because, uh, in that case, I would make the duration until dispelled. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Um, I like this quite a bit. Me too. I could see uh, I could see some very interesting uses for this. I could see some players being like, all right, Probably we gotta make sure no one finds this shit. Timeless, tie something really heavy to it. Like, all right, we're gonna timeless this anchor, and now we're gonna timeless the thing we want to hide, and now we're gonna drop both of them in this lava river. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, you could do it like a. You could basically. I, I dig that though. Okay, I'm but into that. okay, but listen to me. Hear me out on this one. You can combine swords. Uh, teleporting cantrip, put a portal inside of a thing, make a closed wooden box that doesn't have any lid, put your object inside of the box, and then cast Timeless on the box. Oh, but you can't, because the no other object can be in the cube. It doesn't work. Um, regardless, what I'm saying is make a Timeless box, and then put something inside of it so that nothing can ever get to it, because it can't be destroyed. That's my that's my cheese. That's my it's cheese. Very it's interesting. Uh, I love this. Um, I think I fish is the right it, level. I think it should probably have a gold cost. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I am now concerned about like, are there weird implications for this? But for for making indestructible objects. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, guess I, have to, I have to think about it a lot. Yeah, I know. I think it's okay. Um. I'm well, again like the best place to catch that is non magical means. I feel like gives you so much more leeway. Yeah, maybe gives you so much more leeway in dealing with it as a DM if the players realize that oh well if a fork is indestructible it means the game breaks. I like I don't know what exactly the thing will be, but obviously it's a big effect. So, um, do you want to do uh, do you want to do afters next? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, thank you, um, thank you very much for sharing, Cherry. I really like that. Absolutely. Yeah, After and Flipnote also created cool concepts here. Uh, and this is, oh my goodness, After, you got rid of the columns. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, and you also gave it flavor text. Oh. It's been a busy week. I apologize in advance. Some of the spells are not really that well thought out. It's all good after. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm not entirely sure about having those bugs. A finger to his lips silenced her immediately. After his gaze was enough to pierce right through any doubts at that moment. But when his words broke the silence, those doubts had completely vanished. There are allies, much like I am one to you. You might not be able to understand them. But they hum in their own tongue, and they will aid us. So as long as we, so long as we provide them with a place of respite of their own, a hive, if you will. Uh, and uh, your character Afra here. Uh, there's a spell that you have further down here called Afra's Oasis, uh, which is uh, I, I like that you kind of bound this. It looks like this whole little uh, section is bound by this character Afra, uh, which I like. But uh, Hive, Jeremy is the first one here. Do you want to take Hive? Yeah, and uh, sorry guys, it's a little small. It's tough for us to uh, necessarily fangle these. Um, I I run the stream. Pete put up the homework, so we didn't 
make a pre-enlarged template, but we'll make sure we use a larger, pl please, if you are making these, try to use a, a larger font size if you can. Uh, yeah, um, we'll make sure, make sure that gets done for next time. So the hive uh, takes a minute, only a minute, uh, and the material of the month are pollen extracts, flowers, and herbs with 100 gold, which the spell consumes. And it's a druid or ranger spell. You touch a surface of your choice. A small hive grows from the point you touched. The inside of the hive is an extradential space, which contains one of the following types of swarm you choose when you cast a spell. Beetles, centipedes, insects, spiders, or wasps. The hive can, can create up to three swarms of the, of the chosen type, which appear in the nearest space to them to the hive. So they're friendly to you, and they obey any verbal commands that you issue to, the, issue to them, no extra required. If you don't issue any commands to them, they defend themselves from the hostile creatures, but otherwise take no actions. The swarms can willingly, uh, can't willingly move more than 30 feet away from the hive, and if one of the swarms dies, the hive produces another swarm after one round. Oof. The hive has an AC equal to your spell save DC, and a number of hit points equal to five times your level. It's made of psychic damage in all conditions. If it is forced to make an ability check or saving throw, it treats all of its ability scores as 10. It disappears if it's reduced to zero hit points or if spell magic is cast upon it. This is a really interesting idea, a kind of renewable conjure animals vibe. Um, I think it could work. Uh, this is... Oh, man. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's a very... It's to cast, too. Uh, it's very powerful. Uh, I definitely think that, yeah, I think that time should come up a bit. Um... The... Well, it's strange because it's it's too slow to be a combat spell. Uh, so it's like you're setting up this tie, uh, this hive to like protect your base, maybe. Well, I think it's you know, I think it's too slow to be a combat spell, but it is quick enough to be a very um, to be a very like flexible do this on the run to create like this this trap base essentially. Uh, mm -hmm. 100 GP. Well, if you're taking a rest of any kind, right? A short rest. Oh, make a hive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's 100 gold pieces to make it, so it's not completely trivial to do so. Um, mm -hmm. But 100 gold pieces, especially at higher levels, uh, there's a point where, like, I could definitely see a high level adventuring party just having, like, thousands of gold and buying, like, having enough for, like, 20 hives so that some point when they need to, they can just be like, I'm just going to make an army of bugs. Uh, to uh, to fight. Uh, I like the way that you bound them. They can't move more than thirty feet from the hive. Um, I don't know. This is uh, this is close, uh, and this is um... it's very interesting. I think the AC is too high. I think tying it to your spell save DC just might be a bit much. Um, I almost like would prefer if it was just a ten, like it's saving throws. Um, it's kind of but... easy to yeah. If in that particular respect, like if it's a ten, it's pretty easy to break. I mean, you cast it at third level, so your level spice is just twenty five hit points, AC ten. Like, it's not crazy for a a monster to smash the hive. I guess then the bugs are still there. I'm just trying to think oh wait, of no, it wait like no, the, animate, like the animate the objects. This is, I don't know. I'm just not sure. It's it's very strong and it's very interesting. Do the bugs disappear if the hive goes away? Um, um it does not. Does not seem like it. Um, yeah. Anyway, it just yeah. might be a little bit. Um, yeah, it might, it might be a little bit too powerful for the level it's at. I, I don't know if I can give much more advice beyond that. Um, this mm -hmm. is just a very this is a very complicated one. Um, well, and it's because it's a summons ability, right? Anything with summons in 5e has some really strange implications. Um, yeah, it's just got some really funky implications. I like it. I especially oh, like it as a druid in a... I especially like it as a druid in a ranger spell. Uh, feels Absolutely. very right. Uh, in particular, I, I really like this as a ranger spell. Um, it's maybe like a, a little bit too magical for a ranger, but I'm almost okay with that because I like the flavor so much of a ranger mm. having a bunch of bees. Uh, uh, but, um, yeah, I don't know. That's, all, that's about all I have to say, Jeremy. Oh, that's a, this that? is a great question. If your hive is on a wagon, do the bugs move with it? Oh, no. Yeah, you see, this is where anything that we're talking about surfaces can get a little funky. I definitely, I was thinking about that when I made my, my uh, uh, 
the Jellify spell. But yeah, this becomes really potent if you can move it. It becomes outrageously potent if you can move it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, especially I, like you could abuse the hell out of it. Oh, that's an amazing idea. I love like you say that as a joke. Can I have a business pollinating orchards? I love that idea of the adventuring party where that's their base, right? They bought this orchard and they set up these these hives all around it, and it's just like, want to pick some apples? Come get us. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I like that as well. Um, anyway, I think it's a cool direction, uh, as just like, I think in the, here's the thing about Hive, I think it's actually really great for the niche in which it's truly intended, I think, which is what mm -hmm. After said there, a limited range, non-mobile, conjured animals, yeah. it's a, def it's a defense spell for our base. Uh, and I think it works in that context as setting up hives to defend a, like, established base. It's just the flexibility that is kind of baked into it a little bit. Um, so maybe yeah. that's the direction to go to it, is to make it more non-mobile and more, like, for defense. Uh, and you know what? I think I think spending the 100 gold, even, like, in the case where a player uses it when they're short-resting in a dungeon, I think spending the 100 gold to, like, have this extra oomph if you get ambushed during your short rest is totally fine. You think that's enough of a tax? Well, especially as a third-level ranger spell, when do you get that, even? Yeah, like... I mean, I for the druid, they'll druid. get that relatively quick, but... The druid would be fifth level. I think, I think it's okay. Um, or again, maybe that needs to be ten minutes. Or a magical, or a magical but. secrets on a bard. <laughs> Make your hive. Um, everything's a bard spell if you build it the right way. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot. After I know you have a couple others in here. Again, we might come back to them if we have time, but we're running pretty yeah, late. Yeah, I, I know there's some going more to have stuff time. from Flipnote that I would like to. Uh, We'd like to touch on so. Um, we yeah, we'll, we'll, let's look at flip notes right now, Jeremy. Um, Zip, bup, 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 bup. Uh, and oh, the, they also wrote down what their idea, uh, what their idea was, and how they intended to be used. So let me just look and see what the concept is, because uh, that's again, uh, I think a lot of you had great ex uh, executions on this, which was, you know, to come up with a, a good idea is really what it was about, and then see if you can execute it in in a good way in mechanics. Uh, but the, um, mm -hmm. the idea behind the spell is that the party wants a way to communicate with multiple members of the party. If said members were to be get separated in a dungeon or split up to investigate different means, instead of having to hunt each other down, uh, the product of the spell could be used to contact the other party members and meet up and give each other updates. Um, so kind of a, a walkie-talkie situation, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. And I, I meant to say this 28 minutes ago when it happened, but before we go any further... Thank you so much, V Bunny, for resubscribing. Twenty-two hot months. Oh my goodness! Really Thank you so much, V Bunny. Thank you. I needed to just say that because I had I had meant to say it, and I was going to be like, "We're going to say it once we get back from the break," and then my head is empty, and I forgot. Um. And so uh, the the vibe, yeah. Uh, I see here it says uh, basically like I'm I'm making a magical phone. Um, mm -hmm. cool. like oh, I see. Though. I see. Walkie talkie is written in the spell. All right. Cool. Um, do you, um, I, why don't I take this one? Uh, it's got a casting time of one hour, uh, range of touch, uh, and the components are, <laughs> uh, small cans and bottles and containers that you can put an opening to your ear, uh, paper and paints, uh, it's very cute, uh, and it lasts until dispelled. Uh, upon casting the spell, the containers used in the spell become a way to keep direct contact, uh, with someone, no matter how far away they get. Uh, the spell can also be used to link new devices with Echo on it to be linked up so that uh, contact can be maintained. Anyone within five feet can hear the voices from the device, and your voice isn't altered in any way. Upon creation, the Echo device is customized to look however you want it. As long as it keeps its original form, a can is still a can. Uh, and then there are two modes. Uh, the walkie-talkie mode allows it to be toggled uh, when toggled off, your party members cannot hear you, but you can hear them if their devices are linked up, and when toggled on, your party members can hear you. And then phone mode, uh, you get a magic Rolodex of Echo devices linked up and can call one specifically. This is... I mean, there's some, like, phrasing on how you'd write this stuff, but actually, very cool. 
I really love that idea of like you create this like you create a phone for like an NPC that you're like, I need to talk to you sometimes. Please take this. Um, kind of like creating um kind of like creating sending stones almost. Um mm-hmm. I uh I, I like this a lot. I, I think my advice on mechanics would be to like I think you gotta up the power level on this. Um the most potent comparison would probably be Rary's telepathic bond, which is obviously it's a ritual, it does not and it doesn't last forever, but it does more people. I don't know, there's a lot of like differences in well, it, but I still telepathic, think telepathic though, right? Anyone could hear this. Um this isn't like a silent communication. So that's I think true. there's a huge drawback to that. Um I think but, it's actually an astronomical drawback. I still think huge, it, uh, I still think the spell ahead. level would need to be going up to like essentially what this allows you to do is create a sending stone. Um, I think if you put this at fourth level and put like a, a more a gold cost on it that would limit it a little bit. Yeah, definitely that would be, definitely spend money to make these. Yeah, that would be very cool. I think this would be a very, very exciting pickup for a lot of players. Uh, and the echo is really good. Like, I love the idea of giving an NPC one of these. Jeremy, you hit the nail right out of the park oh, yeah, there. Absolutely. Um, well, and the thing, the thing I like about it the most is beyond the fact that it's cool, right? In, in a lot of parties, this already happens, right? You find an NPC that you care about. You want to talk to this NPC a lot for various reasons. And the poor cleric or wizard has to use all their third level spell slots all the fucking time to cast sending to people. And it's like, oh, the message was slightly over 25 words. I guess I'll use three more fucking spell slots to cast more. You know, it's a pain in the ass. It's a spell tax. And it's not, like, fun for the cleric or the wizard to use all their third level spell slots to cast sending all the fucking time. You know what our fun? It's not enjoyable to them. This is fun. Gold taxes. I'm not joking. There's nothing. Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have anything to spend gold on, yeah. and so like just spending money, like oh yeah, I can just spend the money to make a bunch of magic cell phones for all my friends. Like hell's yeah. Um, oh yeah, awesome. <laughs> Even if this was like a thousand gold, which is a very <laughs> steep cost for these kind of um, things, people would still like this would still be a very exciting spell. Yep, for like, I agree. Um, and I, yeah, I think that's the place to balance it is on how expensive it is. Um, and I think I can get behind fourth level. I was like thinking fifth a bit, but I, I think I can. Get I behind could even get behind first. third level, honestly. But I could see why fourth level is probably more appropriate. Um, I think it depends how much it costs, right? If it's like a thousand gold, this is a third level spell. Like that's might, no small sum. I might actually. Right now it says uh, it's third level transmutation with a couple question marks. Divination, maybe. How do you feel about it's, divination for this? What's what is I'm sending, with, I guess, is the question. I'm also fine with divination. What is the sending spell? Sending is probably divination. It is evocation. <laughs> That's weird. It makes sense now that I think about it. Um, yeah, I, I think the reason I think transmutation works is because you are transmuting these two objects together, right? You're tying them together. Okay, in yeah, I can, I, can, sense. I can see that. I think I think transmutation was right. Like I would have picked transmutation flipping out, but I can understand why you were also a little like I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I that, uh, magic and D&D is wild after absolutely. That uh that argument works for me. The um transmuting them together uh works for me. Uh, but yeah. uh yeah, that's that's echo. I think it's a very cool spell. Um, that's all. Yeah. I think it's very cool. There are another, I know there are other cool ideas here. Uh, candy Candy, uh, which I'm, I wonder what the hell Candy Candy does. I, I'll, I'll check the, we'll check these out eventually, guys. But oh, yeah. uh, for now, we're quite late, uh, and I have a very busy work week ahead of me this week. So I think we're just about ready to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, sounds great to me as well. Um, so let me start off by saying thank you guys so much for all of these really cool ideas that you guys came up with. Um, I was definitely, um, this was a very complicated prompt, uh, and I think you guys absolutely crushed it. Uh, I liked every single spell, uh, that, that y'all came up with. I I thought they were all really great. Um, so, uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing them, guys. Yeah, um, I'm, you know... 
last week was an incredibly successful week. We created a whole bunch of cool Arctic plant monsters that I had, I couldn't have come up with myself uh, that I think are a really awesome addition to games that uh, would be run in an Arctic setting. Today I came up with a bunch of permanent spell effects that I think could be used in almost any game. Um, they're all very, very cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm very excited where we're going with this and I'm excited to see where we continue to go in the future. I'm really, um, I, sooner or later, we're going to do some like, once we get into the real rhythm of this, I think we can do some like real big projects. Um, certainly. Uh, and um, for people who are, who are doing the homework, uh, I don't know, Jeremy. Uh, me and Jeremy are going to talk and figure out homework in a more official fashion at some point uh, because uh, you all seem to be having a lot of fun with it. I don't know if you guys want to do homework every week. Um, if, if you want us to put something out every week and, and give you a goal. Also, there's going to be weeks where we won't have as much time to go over it. So I don't know if we want to um, do it on weeks where we know, for example, we're going to have a lot of time to spend talking about a new Arthur Arcana or something like that. Um, but uh, after saying I like homework every week, uh, so um, we'll uh, uh, we'll we'll think about it. If, I mean, if you guys all want the homework every week, then of course it's very easy for us to make a homework assignment. So uh, let us know what you're thinking as we're going through and we're figuring this thing out. Um, I was also thinking about putting out a group project, uh, if that's something that appeals to you guys all. Uh, if uh, that isn't something that really interests you, also let me know that. Uh, but um, yeah, there'll be another assignment next week. Yeah, and it'd be also cool, and maybe that's what we, we can do uh, moving forward, is we could have, like, a couple of, of homework projects that kind of build into a grand or something in the end. Um, but Pete and I, again, we're going to discuss that and see where we're going. Until then, we'll see you all this Friday for Pete and Jeremy's D&D time. Uh, all right. I'm Jeremy. I'm Pete. And this is... This is Fantasy Labs. Fantasy Labs. <laughs> Sorry. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs>